Great, thanks. I hope everyone can hear me okay. This is Patrick Kale here from IMBA. So thanks for joining us today for the webinar on the IMBA Trail Accelerator Grant. And this is um, a great opportunity for us to talk about the program, give you some background on the Trail Accelerator uh, Grant opportunity, discuss what we've funded in the past, and to walk through the application. It's relatively straightforward, but there are some nuances that we're going to um, take an opportunity to delve into a little bit deeper. Some of the questions just bear a little bit more of um, a little bit more thought. So thanks everyone for coming along. We have um, a great group. It looks like we have about 20 or 25 people on the webinar. Uh, we have folks from Arizona. We have folks from New Mexico, Ohio, Arkansas, uh, Vermont, California, Tennessee, North Carolina. So really a, a, a very broad range of um, participants, which is exciting that we've uh, We've reached out so far and got this got this group to join us. So my name's Patrick and I'm Imbis Grants Manager. I'm based in Prescott, Arizona. And I've been with Imba for about seven years. Initially I was based in the just in the southwest region. Um, but now I'm worked as Imbis Grants Manager nationally. So I'm involved in all kinds of both grant writing and the the programming of the Imba Trail Accelerator grant, which is and be giving grants out to communities. Um, so uh, by way of a format, we're going to um, walk through the grant application. We'll give a background on the program. Mike will talk about the projects we've funded in the past. We'll get into detail about some of the, uh, some of the uh, questions. We'll review examples of some of the high-ranking proposals from last year. And then there'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions. But um, Mike, do you want to unmute yourself and give a little background? and then talk about the um, Embitrail Accelerator uh, project in the past? Yeah, this is Mike Rapiak, Imba Trail Solutions Director of Planning and Design. Um, I've been with Imba for over three years now. I have a background in recreation planning and uh, have been doing four-season recreation planning uh, for quite a few years now and have uh, taken that into the mountain bike realm and has really been working on projects uh, nationally and internationally. Um, background on the Trail Accelerator Grant Program, um, we've been uh, doing this now for a couple of years. It's an uh, in-kind donation grant program and it's for planning and design services. Uh, so we've uh, worked on a range of projects um, over the past 18 months that we'll dive into a little bit deeper here in the next few slides. Patrick, was that what you were looking for? Yep, that's great, Mike. Can everyone just give a little thumbs up in the in the chat function, so just so that I know that we're that everyone's hearing is okay? I did get a couple of messages. People saying they couldn't hear me. Yep, sounds like it's all working. Yep, Mike, there's the first slide about some of the projects, and then I'll once you've discussed those, I'll move on to the next. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we've awarded seven Trail Accelerator grants uh, so far in our first round. We awarded three projects, uh, one in Tennessee, one in Arkansas, and one in Wisconsin. Uh, the project in Tennessee is um, working along with uh, North Chickamauga Creek Conservancy. Uh, they um, submitted, uh, I believe, uh, $12,500 for that work. Uh, we did a site visit there, actually two site visits that uh, resulted in a plan for around 10 miles of uh, trail and we flagged a couple miles of trail in there uh, to get them set up for the first phase of construction. It's very much a gravity oriented uh, trail network with great opportunities for uh, downhill and free ride trails, a lot of different rock and uh, texture out there which is really neat and it's also a multi-use trail plan. Uh, there's a lot of hiking going on there and also access to uh, bouldering fields. So it um, provides a plan for many different uses. Uh, the Dequeen Lake Trails um, in Dequeen, Arkansas, that's with the Army Corps of Engineers uh, and a local organization, Legacy Initiatives, um, looked at a large property over 8,000 acres and uh, spent a few days there uh, getting the concept plan together and then also flagged, uh, I believe, to be about three miles. So I'm looking to maybe get that to six miles here this fall uh, of trail that will be ready for 
construction. Uh, and then the, the third of that first round was Grandma's Gateway Project in La Crosse, Wisconsin, uh, on a very underutilized piece of property that's along a bluff line overlooking the Mississippi River. We've uh, done an overall concept plan for 25 plus miles, uh, looked at the phase one trails within that, around six miles of trail that we flagged this spring and have recently completed the trail specifications and uh, bid documents, um, supporting documents for the bid package to go out uh, this fall, this winter for construction next year. So pretty excited for that project too. Um, we awarded four projects in the second round and uh, once again a couple projects ah. from Tennessee and uh, these projects here, since we awarded them in the spring or in the fall um, and uh, um, due to timing of when we got contracts in place for initiating that work, uh, we are going to be starting those projects this fall uh, during leaf off conditions. So that's key for many of our projects in the south. Uh, we need to be able to see really well in the uh, property that we're on and these properties have pretty dense vegetation, so we're waiting until uh, leaves are off the trees and the understory so we can go in and kick those two projects off. Uh, the next two projects, we've started one of them um, in Bellevue, Nebraska for the Swanson Bike Park. Uh, that project is a community bike park, um, I believe it's around 500 um, acres or so. Um, actually, no, the, the park itself is only 100 and some acres, but we're looking at doing uh, a bike park that has two pump tracks skills development loops, uh, NICA course, uh, just event venue overall. And uh, we did that site visit in July, working through the, the planning graphics right now, uh, presenting that to our clients and stakeholders, and we'll be looking to finish up that concept plan this fall. Uh, the fourth of the round two is a feasibility study for the city of Madison, Wisconsin, where the city has close to 6,000 acres of public lands. Madison's known for having a hard surface trail network that's uh, world class, but uh, when it comes to natural surface trails uh, within the city proper, there's not much for, for natural surface trails. So we're looking at uh, all 6,000 acres and see how we can connect parks, uh, add bike parks, add trails, uh, develop some NICA training venues, maybe even a NICA um, event venue. So a lot of great opportunities there. We just uh, finished up on the, the contracting with that one, so we're going to start that work here in the next month or so. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. So I'll jump into talking about the 2019 application process now, but just to give a little background, um, this program was funded by Tom and Stuart Walton, the members of the Walton family, the, the folks that founded and owned Walmart. Primarily, they're based in the Bentonville, Arkansas area. But the, the Walton family funded this program in 2018, and it was specifically restricted to the central states. So those seven projects that Mike has just reviewed, they're all obviously focused in Arkansas, Tennessee, Wisconsin. That's, that was the region that the Walton family requested we focus the, the initial two grant rounds. So we have since received additional funding, so definitely want to give a big shout out and thanks to the, the, the donors who have contributed since then. The Waltons continue to fund the program. Um, the Katina Foundation are funding the program for work in the, the Southwest Four Corners area. Um, and then People for Bikes, SRAM, Fox, and Shimano have also all contributed to the program. So a lot of big names that you know from the mountain bike industry, and we certainly thank them for their, um, for their support. So like I said, the program was initially restricted to the central states, and that was for the first two rounds. That was a, a grant round in summer, um, summer 2018, and then another grant round in fall 2018, which stretched into spring 2019. So this is now... This is now round three of the Trail Accelerator grant, and the program is now national. So it's great that we have a lot of participants from the central states where the grant was initially restricted. We have more funding, um, and it's awesome that we now have folks on this call and hope, hopefully applications from people, from organizations from all around the country. So I'm going to jump into the application. So everything that I'm going to show will be available in a PDF, so there's no need to be uh, frantically writing notes. We'll send this 
entire presentation, both a recording and a PDF document of the presentation will be sent to all everyone who's on this call today. So feel free to concentrate on the call, um, put your questions into the, the, the uh, chat channel, and we'll get to them at the end. But no need to be writing down everything in detail. So this is, whenever you go to the website, uh, the Trail Accelerator Grant website, and then you can, there's a button that says apply now. This is the first thing that you're going to see. So this is all just basic elemental information, but we ask that you fill it out carefully. For example, it might be easy to skip past which state you're in, or maybe the primary contact is, is somebody different than who's on this call, or a different email address. So please make sure that um, for this initial, um, this initial information, just fill it out as carefully as possible. That would be in everyone's best interest. Um, then for the second slide, this, this next one I've put up, um, it's the first question says um, organization type. So this grant is open to organizations such as um, land managers like with the Forest Service or a city parks department or maybe a chamber of commerce or a, a regional economic development agency or a, uh, maybe a, 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 county, um, a county group of county commissioners or another example would be a community health department or a, a county health department or a land trust. So they're the types of organizations that can apply. We certainly want to see local mountain bike clubs participate in the project and offer their support. And the grant later on in the grant, it, it will ask, for the applicant to list which organizations are supporting the project and does it have a mountain bike club involved. And because there's a matching funds requirement, maybe the local mountain bike club could assist with that. But just to clarify, for the purposes of who's actually submitting the application and hitting the submit button, it has to come from an agency such as those that I listed, whether that's a, um, a city parks department or the forest service or county commissioners. Chamber of Commerce, they're the organizations that can apply. Um, looks like then we're looking for the project title and project location. So uh, there will be an opportunity later in the grant to get into detail about your site, but this project location, if you can provide a link um, to on Google Maps as to where your project is primarily going to be or where it's going to be focused, that would be great. Then the next question asks about a timeline. And Mike will get into this conversation in a little bit more detail later on, but um, we just want to make sure that folks understand that, that uh, there, there will be quite a few applications. There will be multiple projects chosen through this process, uh, and that's going to be a um, we're, we certainly have the staff to, to complete those projects, but we have to be thoughtful about where we're working at what time of the year. For example, we're not going to be in Buffalo, New York in January when there's six feet of snow on the ground. And similarly, our staff wouldn't be tra planning trails in the Sonoran Desert in Arizona uh, around Phoenix in July. So just keep that in mind when you're requesting when you would like this project to be completed, that there are geographical uh, restrictions on when we can get there. Then the last question on um, that slide, it says, what previous natural surface trail planning processes have been completed? So this isn't necessarily a make or break. We, we just want to know if there has been any trail planning in the past. If there has, that's great. We'd like to know. If there hasn't been any trail planning, that's also great. We'd like to know that as well. But um, don't feel that you need to have already completed any kind of plans. It's fine that you haven't. We simply want to uh, find out what has gone on. And if there hasn't been anything, that's totally fine. Um, again, these next couple of questions in the actual application, real simple, it's just a little yes or no. We want to know if folks participated in the webinars, either this one or the next one coming up. Um, and again, we want to also find out if anyone has attended an Ember Trail Lab, and we'll talk about those towards the end of the webinar. So just feel free to say yes or no. Again, these questions aren't weighted. We simply want to find out what, uh, what depth of, of background knowledge you have about Ember. Um, I'm now going to pass it over to Mike. A couple of questions here about the deliverables and the matching funds requirements. So, Mike, do you want to jump in and talk about these ones? Yeah, I'll just touch on these uh, briefly. 
Um, this grant award is an in-kind grant. It's not a, a cash award. Um, so the the funds that uh, you are able to submit as an organization, we match that with uh, services of plan in planning and design. So uh, say you come with five thousand uh, dollars, we're able to do a ten thousand dollar scope of work for you. Um, the Funding support that we've gotten from other partners is what makes that possible for us. Uh, so uh, another example would be the Madison uh, Tag Award that we um, are, are working on. Uh, they came with $20,000 and we're doing $40,000 of feasibility and uh, concept planning. Uh, so we have a range of projects that we're able to award. We're typically going typically going from uh, $5,000 to $30,000. A lot of them are averaging in that $15,000 range, and uh, we asked the question about uh, is this a site-specific plan that you're looking for or a much wider community uh, assessment, and uh, this gets us started on wrapping our heads around the um, type of project you're looking to, to get rolling. So um, a smaller property with more budget allows us to go into more detail, um, a very large landscape um, with maybe a smaller budget, maybe just be a, a quick feasibility study. Um, a large landscape with uh, more of a budget allows us to do something similar to that Madison TAG grant that I mentioned. Um, that pretty much covers those pieces there. Anything that you would add, Patrick? No, that's great. I think it's just worth clarifying that um, in the process of whenever we, we get to selecting some finalists without having made decisions, some folks may be called for, for you know, uh, not an interview, but just some follow-up questions. And one of the reasons we do that is to make sure that we're talking the same language. For example, what, what we call a concept plan, somebody else may be thinking that it's a detailed trail design and vice versa. So we're, before we commit and, and sign on the dotted line to awarding any grants, we make sure that, uh, that, that ourselves and the, the successful community uh, are, are in agreement as to what the deliverable is because we don't want to set any expectations where folks were thinking they were getting um, a, a really detailed 50 mile trail plan for 200,000 acres when that's not what we what we had in mind. So just keep keep that in mind that we will um, we will call some folks. If you do get a phone call, it doesn't necessarily mean your grant has been funded. It simply means we want to learn more. Um, but that's the stage when we will clarify, just making sure we're all on the same page about what the deliverable will be. Okay. So um, jumping in now, the, everything that we've just talked about is kind of the background information that's in the application form. It's all very straightforward. Um, and I just want to emphasize that we, we understand that not every community and every agency has a professional grant writer on staff. So we, we, I want to emphasize that this isn't, we're not trying to catch people out. We're not trying to find out what you don't know or what the holes are. We're trying to, we're trying to get as much information from you as possible about your community and about your project and about the potential. So, um, you know, just feel free to answer the questions um, as, as best you can and in as much detail as you can. And we will go into some, show some examples of quality high-ranking proposals from the past, but just understand that us on the on the Imba end who will be reviewing proposals, we're not going to be, we're, we're not deliberately trying to catch people, we're instead, we're, we're trying to find out, you know, what do these folks understand about their community, what's the potential for a really successful project there. That's why we get into the level of detail that we do in some of these questions. Um, so for this first one here, the organization uh, and agency description and mission, that's pretty self-explanatory. We want to find out as much as we can about your organization. We want to understand it. We want to know about how many staff, what the history is, have you completed any successful trail projects. And again, if you haven't, um, don't feel that you have to sort of squeeze a, a square peg in a round hole. If this is your first time going through a trail planning process. If there aren't any mountain bike trails whatsoever in your community, that's totally fine. So again, don't, don't feel that you have to have um, an extensive network already that you're building on. Just let us know what, what thing, what, what's it like in your community, um, and then we can make our assessment from there. 
And, and similarly then with the next question, the, the project summary, we want to find out how your project creates more trails close to home. And that's a very specific terminology that MB uses these days. And we, we're doing that to make sure that we're, that we're creating trails that are available uh, to as broad a range of people as possible. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we love the trails that are in the front country and the trails that are in city parks and trails that, are, that you pump tracks and bike parks and longer distance trails that lead off into more remote areas. But we really want to hear about how your, how your project is bringing people to an area, how it's going to be easily ac accessible from um, a neighborhood or how it's going to be easily accessible from downtown or how it's going to be easily accessible from a city park. That's what we want to find out in that question. And we also want to find out about the demand, like what, what, how many riders are there, how many do you think there would be, what's, what's, um, what's the potential of growing the mountain bike community. So for the next couple of questions about the project site and vicinity, I'm going to pass it back to Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're looking for additional information on uh, um, what's going on within the property that you're looking to do projects on. So uh, is the site developed? Is it uh, undeveloped? Are there trails there right now? Um, what are there for structures, if any? Is, are there access points and parking lots? Are we starting with a, a clean slate? Uh, include any sort of maps that you have for the area, even if it's just screenshots from Google Earth. Um, and we'd like to know if there's any resources of concern. Maybe there's utilities there that we need to be aware of. Anything physical on the site that will help us out, um, especially the size of the, the property. Is this a 20-acre site? Is this a 500-acre uh, site or more? Uh, so that really helps us on the, the property detail. And then for the vicinity description, really want to get a feel for what's happening in the area around this project. Are there schools nearby? Are there neighborhoods nearby? Is there uh, neighboring recreation? Uh, looking at c connectivity is a uh, major component of the planning and design that we do. We want to see how we are enhancing the area or we're doing something new and we're looking to try to connect things that may not be there already and, and see some other opportunities. So um, looking at both the site itself and the, the area around its site. And also to get an idea of some of the demographics that may be um, happening around there, uh, just to give us an overall view of, of what the areas that we're going into. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. And just to put folks at ease a little, we will have a couple of screenshots at towards the end of this presentation. Again, it'll be in the, it'll be in the PDF, but we will show a couple of examples of really good applications of what folks, how folks responded to those two questions. So the last one there on this slide is project goals. And again, this is simply where we want to say a concise, um, you know, three bullets from you or three, three or four lines, very simple sentences, simply stating what it, is you, what it is you want to get out of this project, what it's going to do in your community. So for example, you know, you might, you might be stating that you're, you want to develop a, um, a race loop for your local high school team. It's going to be part of the, part of the or design a race loop for your local high school team, or maybe it's an interpretive trail in a state park that you want to interpret historical resources in a state park, and you want people to be able to do that by bicycle, or there are growing um, after-school programs for, let's say, for disadvantaged kids, and you want to create an opportunity for these kids to be able to get out and enjoy themselves in a safe, easily accessible area. So number five is, you know, keep it simple, keep it concise, Three bullets, four bullets, something like that's what we're looking for there. Um, so number six here, let's see. Yeah, does this project involve an EMBA affiliated local mountain bike organization? This is an expansion on what I just spoke about. So this is where we want to find out um, about, about a project that, what's the best way to put it? A project that, that reaches beyond the traditional mountain biker um, most of us on this call are likely mountain bikers and we know who mountain bikers are and what they look like and from members membership database our, our constituents tend to be um, mid 40s Caucasian males that's just the, the, the that's just the way it goes and that's who have been our constituents in the past and that's who you see on trail so what we want to do with this question is 
we want to find out, are you, is this project going to bring young people into the mountain bike community? Are we going to get kids racing on Nike teams? Um, are we going to see women riders? Are we going to encourage new groups of folks participating? Is there going to be an opportunity for non-competitive programs, for example, marginalized youth, maybe from, you know, from, from difficult backgrounds who um, will have easy access to this trail system? So this is a question where we want to find out that we want, we want you to dig deep and think about how, how are we going to develop a project that will reach the non-traditional mountain biker. That's really what we're looking for in, uh, in number six. And then number seven, does this proposed project have a uh, trail planning committee? Again, what we want to find out here is the background to your project. We want to find out about um, have there been trail planning meetings. Some communities have been working on trail plans for multiple years. Some communities have never done trail, any kind of trail planning at all. So we want to find out what kind of trail planning has happened in the past. And we also want to find out have there been any successful projects. Maybe, if not necessarily trail projects, have there been other successful parks and recreation projects. And we want to understand if there has been a commitment in the past from the, the various local agencies committing to seeing a project through to completion, whether it's a bike trail or whether it's a ball, ball field or whether it's a community swimming pool. So we want to find out here um, who's involved in planning trails in your community, what, is the, what work has been done, and give some examples of successfully completed projects where there has been a line item for maybe maybe your, your city council have approved $100,000 a year for the last four years for, um, for painting bike lanes, for example. That would be an example. Or they have committed funds for building a pump track, and now they want to build a six-mile intermediate loop. So they're the kind of things we want to hear about. Have there been examples where the community, specifically the, the, the Parks and Rec Department, the Forest Service, the BLM, the local land managers, have they successfully committed funds to projects in the past? I do see a couple of questions there. Um, thanks for posting those. Uh, I, do, uh, I do have a record of them, and we will answer those towards the end. Let's see. Timeline. Um, you, Mike? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're looking to get a good idea of what your expectations are for this project. Are we... Uh, Look at doing some planning and design this fall. We want to get into construction in the spring, or are you starting off with some initial feasibility studies and uh, want to get into concept planning next year and construction in 2021? So it gives us an idea of the uh, the pace that you're looking to go at and what your timeline and milestones are for the project. Awesome. Uh, number nine, how does this um, how does this organization, your organization, this project support increasing diversity? So again, that's building on the last question, but again, we want to really see that communities are making an effort to reach beyond the traditional mountain biker and provide a resource that's, that's accessible for everyone. You know, the examples I would give is um, if, if a proposal is for a double black diamond trail that's 30 miles up a BLM dirt road at 10,000 feet elevation, well, that's probably not going to be a high priority to us. But if you're proposing something that is, you, you have a community where there's growing participation from women, uh, growing participation from young people, um, easy access from a state park, easy access from a campground, and it, it follows the, the, the stacked loop model, for example, maybe a two-mile beginner trail, or a three-mile intermediate trail and then a six-mile more remote trail. They're the sorts of things we're looking for. Those types of trails that will be encouraging to as many people as possible rather than trails that are, like I said, like I said, those trails that are focused on what we have seen to be our, our sort of typical mountain biker or trails that are only going to be accessible and enjoyable by, by the fewest amount of people. We want it to be broad. We wanted to reach deep into the community. And then with number 10, do you have written support from three local officials for this project? Again, this is a yes or no question, and you will have a, an opportunity to list their names and contact information. We don't necessarily need the letters of support. 
but it may be something that we follow up with. Uh, for examples here would be maybe the mayor is uh, listed or the chairman or the chairwoman of your county economic development department. Maybe it's the, the head ranger for the city parks department. Maybe it's uh, a senior staff person at the city health department. So those are the sorts of folks that you want to list as having given written support. That written support can be as simple as them emailing you and say, they support your project, but we would like their contact information in the event that we can follow up with them, um, just so we can have a conversation with them to see what they're where they're at with the project. Um, let's see. Okay, so here uh, the title here this this slide is 2018 grant application responses. So I'm going to talk a little bit here about. Um, let's let me just make sure, check my notes here. Mike, I think this was one. No, this is this for me or you, Mike? I can't remember. Yep, yep, that's for you, Patrick. Yeah, this is for me. So yeah, this is an example of um, a really good response to the project goals. So as you can see, we asked for three to four goals, three to five goals. They gave four, and they hit some really good points, and they gave some specifics. Um, they want to improve health. They looks like they did some research on their. Obesity, um, obesity rankings in their state. This was a project in Arkansas, and they they feel that this would be a way to address that. Obviously, mountain bike is not a silver bullet, and we're not going to claim that mountain biking is going to solve the obesity crisis either locally or nationally. But we know that if we build easily accessible trails, it's going to make an impact. If we can get as many young people and non-traditional riders, and even offering opportunities for existing riders, so. Um, these folks said, you know, improved health, um, economic growth. They felt that, that you know, they're a rural community, and they see that building trails. They're close to north. They're close to the northeastern part of Texas. They're going to see tourists come into their region. Um, they mentioned diversity, so they want to see uh, Latinos and women, which I think is awesome. There are two groups that, that typically are underrepresented in mountain biking. So these folks felt that. If they have, if, if they build these easily accessible trails, and re remind you, this is one of the projects that was funded. I think this is the, the Queen Arkansas project. This is one that we ranked very highly. And then they want to protect public land. These, this group sees that uh, if they build trails, people will get out and enjoy the property. They'll want to protect it. They'll want to preserve it. So this was an example of, of someone who did a really good job in responding to that question about what are the four goals of your project. Um, this is another one. They went to six. Obviously, it's a little bit longer than we asked for, but this is the Madison, Wisconsin project. And again, these were examples of um, just a really good response. They realized that there's a public, there's demand in their community for off-road cycling, and they're going to work to meet that demand. Um, they feel that this project could could help with developing partnerships and growing funding for the the, the, the broader community network. Um, it would provide affordable opportunities for recreation experiences for all residents, uh, and that's very important. You know, the, the the cost of designing and mountain bike trails. Obviously, there's that initial upfront cost, and then the construction cost of doing it right. Um, but but the compared to other facilities, like, like for example, a golf course, um, I would I feel that natural surface trails are certainly a much more affordable um, amenity to create, and these folks realize that as well. They want to expand riding for underrepresented populations. Again, wonderful. We really, we really want to hear that they're going to be getting those groups or working to get those underrepresented groups onto the trail. Connectivity is a big one, um, and it, was, it seems that it's a city goal. So the city council have likely adopted some kind of a, um, a goal that they want to increase tr sustainable transportation loose, use, and they see that these trails within city parks are going to be part of that. That's a really good response because it shows that this group is plugged into their broader community um, planning efforts and they're not simply doing something themselves themselves in a in a silo. And and then the city parks department, um, it, it'll, the project will work to meet the mission of providing safe, accessible recreation facilities for um, can someone go on mute there please? They want, to, they want to meet the mission of the city parks department. So that's another example, a little bit longer than we asked, but they hit some really good points. Um, over to you, Mike. This is an example of a really good area description. 
And again, I think this was this was uh, maybe the Wisconsin project. Yep, this was also a Madison project, uh, giving us a really good idea of uh, the demographics in the area, um, population, age ranges, um, what's going on with schools, um, any sort of uh, bike organizations in the area, um, youth clubs and things like that. It really helps us understand what's going on uh, with engaging the youth at areas. Um, any other sort of programs, uh, economic uh, um, numbers, and uh, really just giving us a feel for what's happening in, in the organization uh, or in the city uh, or location that you're at. Um, just a lot of good background that sees how we can interface with other organizations there or expand upon uh, what's happening already or are we looking to uh, build something new. So any information that you have on the, the locale that you're in, is uh, really helpful helpful for us to grasp what's going on for the culture and uh, the community itself. Awesome, thanks, Mike. And this is another uh, another example from this was at the Queen Arkansas project, and this is a, a really good response that we got, and these were one of the highest ranking. But in this in this or, this question. We asked about the um, agency mission and description, and they just they just gave a really gr a really concise answer. They talked about how they're partnering with um, Department of Heritage and Historic Preservation. They're working with um, uh, tobacco um, anti-tobacco programs, community health as a focus, Minority Health Commission. So that was just one that really stood out as as an organization that again they seem to be really organized in themselves and they are very plugged into what's going on in the larger community. And legacy commu legacy initiatives, just to give an example, um, legacy initiatives isn't a uh, isn't a land management agency, it's not like a parks department. Legacy initiatives is more of a, a non profit community well there you go, it's a non profit community health organization. Um, so that was that was I think that really these folks really hit the nail on the head because they had the community health piece. They had really good partnerships with the land managers. Um, they weren't working in, in, in a silo, in a vacuum, without other folks in the community know what they, knowing what they were doing. They were part of the community. So this was, um, I think in, the, in round one, this was probably the, the, the highest ranking proposal. And again, it was, for the, it was for these reasons that they were really plugged into the community and they had a really strong focus on this trail system is gonna get lots of people outdoors, lots of people recreating on trails. Let's see. Next one, then, is back to you, Mike. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to just touch on the importance of uh, planning and design. Uh, many folks would like to jump directly into construction, and uh, if that does happen, sometimes you can step on your own toes and uh, maybe get in the way of future phases and what you could do. Um, we have a lot of great examples of where planning and design really identified some potential pinch points or any sort of constraints that you may be not aware of initially and uh, opens up a lot of opportunities. So uh, doing that type of analysis, a SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats uh, in your design or initial vision planning and uh, um, wrapping your head around what's possible out there. Um, planning and design really sets the stage, the framework for a successful project and uh, identifying your first phases, your priorities, uh, what you need to be doing for permitting, engaging your stakeholders, uh, many different uh, ways that uh, planning can be used for also then fundraising and getting people on board. Uh, so taking the planning and design services that we are able to offer via this TAG uh, program uh, then sets your project up for success and moving into an impl implementation phase. So just some photos here, examples of engaging stakeholders, doing your site assessments before you're starting to hang flags, and really working with your land managers and getting everybody on board. So that's uh, really what the success has shown so far with the TAG projects that we've started on and getting to the point of construction and uh, looking forward to getting applications from everybody and seeing where you're at with... Uh, relationships with your land managers and other stakeholders. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. 
Yeah, I, I can't emphasize that piece enough about planning. Um, it just makes such a it makes such a huge difference. And it might seem that it takes longer up front, and you're involved, your community's involved in maybe a year or two years or several years of planning. But the 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 pitfalls that it avoids are were pretty phenomenal whenever you do it right. So I would certainly encourage anyone, whether or not you apply for this grant or whether you're searching for other funds to develop trails in your community, that focusing on getting the plan right is um, is, is number one. It's like building a house, you know, you, you, uh, a pile of wood and a hammer and nails doesn't necessarily mean you're going to build a good house, but having a really good architect do the plan for you in the first place, that's what's going to matter. So um, definitely want to emphasize that. And, and again, it was great that our the donors that funded this program, they didn't, they didn't fund the program for trail building. They may in the future, who knows, but they funded a program because we emphasized to them that trail planning is very important, and those funders agreed with us and jumped on board. Let's see. Do you want to talk about this one, Mike, the, this one that's completed? Oh, yeah, just uh, show some of the process that we've gone through. Uh, this here, while it's not a tag uh, project, it follows much of the process that we typically do. This is a project actually up in Buffalo, uh, New York, for a bike park that recently opened up uh, almost two years ago. Well, probably five, six years ago, the vision for this started. And a few years ago, we got involved with the concept planning and meeting on site. You can see the um, the sketch plan in the lower left turned into a construction plan there in the lower middle and uh, now that park is open here this year so uh, pretty exciting to see how planning and design uh, establishes a, a good process for getting into construction and once the uh, wheels start turning on planning and design and as long as fundraising is in place you're able to get to construction uh, in a reasonable manner if all the players are working well together. Awesome, thanks Mike. So that's, that's everything that Mike and I had to present on. We do have some time now. It looks like there are, have been a couple of questions posted so far. Um, feel free to post some more. We've definitely got time to answer them. I will jump into the first one. It looks like uh, Dan Erickson said, by agreeing to the terms of the grant application, um, does this not actually commit you to a monetary obligation, correct? While I feel confident our organization will come up with the matching funds, we cannot commit without authorization from our city council. So I'll just, I'll just kind of back up on this a little bit. Because the, the application has to come from an agency, so let's say this is, a, this is a city parks department that's applying that Dan's working with. So if the city parks department are applying for $10,000 and they're committing $10,000, well, it's okay with us that the, the, maybe the local bike club might commit 2500 and then some other money pumps from other places and the city parks commit 5000 and then together they have that 10000 We simply need to have one entity that we can work with. So rather than the, the matching funds, they can come to the, the applicant from several different places, but then they must come to IMBA just from one place. So that's just kind of the background. But then to answer this question, Mike, I would say that it would be – um, I would err on the side of caution and say that you should have the, fu the funds committed. These grants are due on October 15th, and I would say that having, having a commitment from the City Council um, is going to be the most important piece. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wing that one just in case something went wrong and you went through the process of writing the grant um, and we reviewed it and maybe it was a successful grant and then folks were disappointed because the City said, no, we can't fund this. So I would, I would err on the side of caution, and I would make sure that you have the funds committed from the city council in advance. Does that answer that question, Dan? Feel free to post a comment if you're, uh, if you're able. And maybe while Dan is doing that, there's a next question there uh, from Sonia Thomas. Uh, Thomas, Thomas, if the Forest Service is submitting the app then question number one will be the description of the Forest Service staff, um, et cetera. Yeah, so it wouldn't, let's say I'm pretty familiar with Forest Service departments. Um, I work with the Forest Service extensively. So let's say that it wouldn't, if you were working just with one district office, that Forest Service is broken up into district ranger offices. Um, if you were just working with one district office, I would say that, that I would say to 
um, just list the staff in that department. So maybe there's a, a rec staff officer is typically the way it goes, and then a trail coordinator, and maybe they have um, a trail crew of five or six seasonal. So for that question, Sonia, I would say just focus it on the, the district ranger office that you're working with. There were some folks come on late and some jumped off and jumped on again. Do we have any other questions? We'd love to answer them. We've got plenty of time. I'm just going to give a minute here in case anybody's typing. Mike, do you have anything else to add? Any more comments or questions while we're waiting for for folks to type? Nope, nothing else for me right now. I think we covered it pretty yeah. good. The, um, the last piece I want to mention is um, Natalie Randall. Not a question, but thanks, it's been super helpful. Hey, Nat, that's Natalie up in uh, just south of Moab there in San Juan County. It was great to have you on. Definitely feel free to follow up. Um, Rebecca said, uh, let's see. Maybe you, you came on late, but you covered this, but I'm wondering if the funds can be used for broad planning efforts rather than a specific project. Mike, do you want to answer that one? Um, and just to put it in context, Rebecca is the State Lands Recreation Director for the State of Vermont. Yeah. Uh, yes, we were able to do some uh, broader planning efforts. Um, if you came on late, um, we had talked about uh, the Madison Trail Accelerator grant that we awarded looking at 6,000 acres uh, all within the city of Madison. Um, that's a, a pretty good scale for looking at a trail network um, connectivity across the city. Um, we would look at uh, larger landscapes than that. It depends on what budgets are available and what we can provide for uh, a deliverable. Um, maybe if you would like, um, ask specific questions either to Patrick or myself via email, and uh, we can maybe guide you a little bit on your application uh, if you're looking at doing uh, a state forest wide uh, plan, we can do that. Just uh, uh, part of the analysis can be desktop based and some uh, specified specific field visits to answer some of our questions. So there's a lot that we can do with um, good budgets on uh, kind of a broad landscape scale. Yeah, it looks like there was a follow up there um, about Vermont wanting to develop a tool on how to build trails with wildlife in mind. So, yeah, I mean, Rebecca, I would say that um, if you were thinking about, I wouldn't necessarily think this, this grant is available for a statewide program. It would be available for a specific state forest or a specific state park. And maybe if you applied and there were wildlife um, concerns to be mitigated in that specific state park, well, they're the kind of things that our trail designers would ask up front before they started planning trails. We would look for those um, those shape files overlay that showed where the sensitive habitat was, and then our trail designers, once they were on the ground, they would they would as best possible avoid those areas. Let's see here, just jumping back. Um, so Dan, you said um, while we could guarantee funding authority, the county council would have to formally accept the grant after notice of award. Um, yeah, we and Mike can answer this, but we do have a, a we do have a contract with each entity that we work with. So there would have to be the the one entity in your community that we have that we have a signed agreement with. Yeah, um, to give folks an idea of the process, once we award the grant, uh, we make sure that our scope of work and services with our tasks and deliverables. Um, are in a contract and that we're all understanding of what we're looking to, to do in the project for you. And then in that contracting, it's signed by the organization who submitted the app, the application. Um, now, if the funding is coming from your city council and they would need to um, authorize that funding, that would need to occur from awarding the, the grant to you and then needing to get that funding authority taken care of before we go under contract. Hopefully that answers your question. Thanks, Mike. Looks like Craig Spicer posted a question. He said, came on late. Um, oh, sorry, let me jump back. Uh, Trent Walters posted a question before that. 
He said, when will you decide on the grants? So these grants opened last Monday, September 2nd. It closes on October 15th. And then we will probably spend a couple of months reviewing them. And to put it into context, this is our third round. When we did the first round, we didn't push it too extensively. We didn't market it significantly just to make sure that we were had our system dialed in. And in the first round, we got, I think we got about 12 applications and we selected four. Um, then in the second round, which was about this time last year, we, we got about 23 or 24 proposals just from the central states and we selected three. Um, so now that this is a national program available to much broader, I would, I would expect that we're going to get more applications. Um, I'm kind of guessing 40 to 50 proposals. We want to be very thorough and very fair in reviewing them, so we're going to take our time and do that over the fall. That's also a very busy time for the organization for lots of other grant writing and, uh, and, and donation work at the end of the year. So um, I would say that we'll, and Mike, maybe you can jump in, I would say we'll have made our decisions by, um, by, by late 2019, early 2020. Yep, that sounds right. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Craig said, came on late, is this presentation available to review? The answer is yes, we will send a recording and a PDF and I will send those out this afternoon. Um, one final, thanks Craig, uh, one final point from me is that um, if you're interested in continuing to, to learn about EMBA's programs and understand trail planning in depth in your community. We do have another program called the Imba Trail Labs and these are um, like two and a half day um, in-person hands-on training sessions that are held in Bentonville, Arkansas. Um, we've had several of them in the past. We have anywhere from a dozen up to 40 or 50 participants and it's two and a half days of um, talking about trail planning, talking about best practices, reviewing examples, discussing what could happen in your community. And the next trail lab is coming up in Bentonville on October 23rd to the 25th. And there are still are some spaces available and scholarships available. So um, I will include the link to the Imba Trail Labs in the follow-up email that I send. And it could be of interest to some of the folks on this call. And it looks like we're coming up just under one hour. So I don't, if anyone else has any questions, be free to post them. Uh, the webinar will be sent as a PDF with my email address on the cover page. So you can, you can email me or you have it from the email that I sent earlier. But we would love to hear from you if you have any questions. If you, indeed, if you'd like to join in the second webinar, which is on the 23rd, it'll simply be a repeat of this one, but you're more than welcome to join in. Maybe you've You'll have a chance to review the, the actual application form before then. It might spark some more questions. So um, feel free to jump in that next one. Uh, I'd love to hear from you between now and then if you have any questions. Otherwise, I think we're good. We will wrap it up. And we look forward to hopefully receiving applications from a lot of these groups before the October 15th deadline. And I think we're done. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank yep, you. Thank you.